Absolutely. Uh, let's get Sunil call uh, with us. He's APAC equity strategist at uh, Goldman Sachs. He's joining us right now. Uh, he's our market master of the day. Sunil, great to have you with us here. Thank you for your time. I'm sure you have a view on cement. Not this deal specifically, uh, but uh, it just so happens that, uh, you know, it's, it's, the deal's gone through today. So I've got to start with that. What do you make of it? And uh, what does it mean for, uh, uh, for the largest cement company, Ultratech, uh, post this and uh, the sector in general? I mean, look, I, I think, uh, Prashant, thanks for having me. Look, on cement, uh, we, we generally are positive on the broader infra space, including cement. Obviously, it plays into both the housing and the manufacturing sector. Uh, sequentially, uh, there could be a bit of softness in there because of the construction activity slowing down and the monsoons and all. But I think, in general, we still like the sector. What I would say, uh, when you look at the real estate cycle also if you throw that in the equation obviously cement uh, plays into that as well but within the broader real estate sector and the sort of pivot back to cement i would say our more preference lies uh, in terms of manufacturing over cement uh, and we also think the real estate cycle is best actually played by some of the building material guys so you can sort of pick within that broader cohort even though we like cement, I would say some of the building material uh, uh, stocks, which includes kind of the pipes and ceramics and adhesives, there's probably a better play on the broader real estate and the infra story than, than, than the cement, especially given the near-term softness in the numbers due to, due to slow down. Mm. It's interesting, right, Sunil? I wanted a little more nuanced view on how this is going to change the dynamics of the sector. Because if large players are consolidating, buying a lot of the smaller players, then they would look to sort of push market share, gain more volumes that could come perhaps at the cost of, uh, uh, you know, margins. I, I want to just understand how the dynamics of the cement sector are going to change. And why is it that despite this, all of this uh, action in the cement sector, you are still not that bullish on the space. You prefer building materials uh, as an investment. Yeah, that's a, that's a relative call, Sonia. I mean, again, without getting into single uh, names in here, we still like the largest cement player within our coverage uh, in terms of our buy rating. We have sort of more neutral rating on the rest of the names. So we do think that with the consolidation going on, the bigger players should benefit, and we are constructive on on on, on, on the on, on the stock in particular. But uh, as I said. Within the broader sort of uh, building materials and infra space, that's where our pecking order lies. And the main thesis there is that we do think, as you obviously would know, that a lot of the supply has come in in terms of, for example, real estate in the last couple of years. And um, there are obviously question marks into whether that cycle sustains or not. But we think, given a lot of these uh, sort of projects will have to come up for completion, therefore the demand for the late cycle property uh, uh, cycle uh, building materials should be strong. So there is a much higher demand visibility on, on, on some of these building materials, to, to, to put it that way, rather than cement, uh, which is why we have a relative preference there uh, for those. Uh, Sunil, morning. What's the call in the market now from here on? Uh, the expectation was this is going to be, you know, 2024 is going to be a year of consolidation. Don't expect too much by way of returns. Uh, that's what consensus was when we started the year. But we seem to have front-loaded. And in June, uh, markets have been on a roll. How do you expect the next six months to pan out? And what would be the best portfolio bet? I mean, great question. Look, I mean, uh, to, be, to be honest, our so market views haven't changed uh, much uh, I think post the elections, I mean, we remain constructive on the market. Obviously, as we all know, given all the key ministries have been retained, there is broad policy continuity, right? I mean, the macro continues to be stable. Earnings are coming through. We are finally seeing foreign money coming back into the market, which is our view. So I think we overall remain constructive on, on Indian equities. We have it as an overweight allocation. Uh, in terms of the upside from here on, we are looking for 26,000 on Nifty uh, by June, uh, sort of in roughly 12 months. So that's about sort of in round numbers, 10 percent upside from the current uh, level. So I would say sort of moderate upside given the given the strong gains, uh, but largely driven by the underlying earnings, which we are expecting around 15 percent this year at least. Mm. Uh, Sunil, uh, you know, just a just a quick word on uh, some of the new emerging sort of areas, right? And and if you are looking at, uh, by the way, you guys have been uh, very busy with uh, initiations, right, uh, Sunil? You had uh, you had you had Map My India, uh, TBO Tech, TBO Tech uh, lately, and, and stocks have all zoomed past the initiations. What's driving this? Is it demand from specific? Is it specific sort of you know demands from uh, investors? 
who want to who want to go in and because these are rel relatively smaller companies in that sense, right? TBO Tech, of course, is about what seventeen, eighteen thousand crores in market cap. Map my India, C Infosystems is even smaller. So, just wanted your your thoughts. Uh, I think Prashant, as you said, look, I mean, uh, like many of the other uh, larger foreign houses, we obviously do have coverage on pretty much most of the MSCI India large cap universe, right? And so, I think it's just an effort to kind of ramp up coverage on some of the sort of mid-cap names, where obviously, as we all know, activity has been pretty strong over the, over the last couple of years. And I think that's just ramping up coverage on some of the sort of not so covered names uh, before that. And as you said, obviously, it's the, 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 the main reason for that is the, the, the end industry demand. And obviously, there's just huge demand for some of these smaller uh, mid-cap names beyond the, beyond the large caps. I think having said that, just, sort of, just to sort of bring that back to the market view, uh, the fact that we are seeing foreign flows come back into the market after the election. It's now like what 12, 13 trading days in a row where foreign flows have been positive, maybe in part in yesterday, but sort of close to 4 billion foreign inflows have come back into the market, right? And so I think what that also means that on the margin, you could see some of the large cap names and maybe some of the quality mid caps, which are kind of a little bit more larger in size, uh, do much better than, uh, than some of the, the, the smaller micro caps in here. Okay. Well, for now, uh, it's really a party out there in the broader cement space. So, Burnpur Cement is up almost 13%. But remember, a lot of these companies, uh, you know, have not had an amazing track record. So, just be a bit wary. I mean, Burnpur Cement is an 8 rupee stock. Orient Cement is up 10%. India Cement, of course, is up 6.5%. And a couple of other names also looking pretty good. Uh, but Sunil, I wanted your thoughts on some of the other spaces that have once again come back into action, right? Um, whether it is something like defense, whether it's power, um, railways, any of these spaces that you see more traction going forward? Uh, yeah, I think uh, if you, for example, look at look at what the government focus has been, I think they are, we, we still think that they will, for example, continue to sort of focus on infrastructure as, as an example. Although at the margin, I think uh, things that are kind of more labor intensive could get a little bit of more more push. Uh, what that means is, I think, for example, railways, as you pointed out, Sonia, I think we still think that, that the railways is a sector that could, that could continue to, to, to benefit oh, here. Oh, there, oh, there has oh, been a oh, lot oh, of focus on, on railways in the, in the Manifesco as well. So we, so we do think just sort of broader uh, companies exposed, exposed to the railway segment should do well. Defense is another area which I think is not just a theme in India, but I think a broad theme across the region in terms of everybody getting uh, becoming a little bit more self-sufficient and self-reliant. And so we do think uh, that defense can, can continue to do well, especially I think as we all know, we, we continue to see more news flow in terms of contracts being awarded, including uh, sort of in, the, in the recent few days. And so I think as long as those kind of contracts come through, which are much more lumpy in nature and, and, and improve the profitability for many of these stocks, we, we think there is still kind of that fundamental underpinning for many of the defense stocks. So we do like the, the railway segment, we do like uh, the defense. So these are, these are some of the sort of Broader themes which we like within within the market, uh, within the sort of broader market. Sunil, I remember uh, Goldman also liked telecom stocks, particularly you know the large ones over there. Uh, but now a stock like say Bharti, which is the largest pure play telecom uh, you know story in India, is up forty percent this year. Do you think all the potential positive triggers, like say a tariff hike, an impending tariff hike, is already priced in, or is there still upside? Um. Look, I think that the, the core view behind telcos was two folds. Uh, one of them was the fact that you are you have seen bulk of the capex in terms of the, the, the 4G, 5G sort of behind us, and so you should start to see cash flows inflecting and, and better cash flows going forward. And so I think that's kind of the fundamental view behind that. And then there were some expectations of tariff um, hikes. I think uh, to your point, Sonia, despite the fact that the sector has done well, we still think that if I mean, the, the cash flows kind of support the overall overall sort of more higher, and if there is uh, any sort of positive news flow on the on the tariffs, that could that could mean the sector should do do, do better. Um, I think keep in mind, I think investors are also the, 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 when we started the, the the conversation, people are also kind of thinking that from here on, if there is much more moderate upside on the on the markets in in aggregate, then maybe it makes sense to be a little bit more towards the defensive pockets of the market, and so telcos is one one which checks that box, so is insurance at the margin. So I think, I think some of these sectors can actually do, uh, do this actually well for the next three to six months. 
Okay. Uh, by the way, just uh, stay on Sunil for a bit, right? Uh, Uttam, stay on. We'll come back to you as we, you know, watch this entire story unfold. But Sunil, getting back to the markets, the next big thing that the street is watching out for is the union budget. Most uh, probably it'll be the end of July. Um, this has been a very strong market. But is there anything in the budget that can come through which could sort of further, you know, increase momentum in the markets? Uh -oh. Most of the investors we speak, Sonia, I mean, they're obviously focused on a few things in the budget. One is obviously the path of fiscal consolidation, right? We, we still think that the government will adhere to the fiscal consolidation. They're sort of targeting uh, 5.1 uh, by the end of the fiscal. So I think that that still comes through. So there should not be too much surprise on, on that front. Uh, obviously, the other bit is how, how the expenditure comes through in terms of how much CAPEX versus uh, the, the, the more sort of welfare subsidies. Uh, there again, we, we, we do think that it's not going to be a, a pivot away from infra uh, spending to, 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 to welfare spending, but they will continue to do uh, do infra. Maybe at the margin, some of this could become off balance sheet uh, as opposed to kind of uh, on balance sheet, but, but there could be slightly higher allocations towards uh, some of the consumption uh, categories. And so one of the changes sectoral changes we made after the after the elections was that even though we like the broader manufacturing sector, we were underweight staples, so we actually neutralized uh, staples to, to market weight. And we obviously are, are, are market weight also the consumer uh, retail and, uh, and discretionary bits. So at the margin, seems like consumer could also do a bit uh, bit, bit, bit better. Um, so I think that, so those, those two would be the, the main focus from, from investors, one in terms of fiscal consolidation part and, uh, and B in terms of how the of the spending mix uh, comes through uh, from the budget. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, I just want to uh, step back a little bit and take a look at the broader market as well, right? And uh, just quickly tell our viewers what's happening because there is a lot happening. The last point before we uh, sort of let you go, uh, you know, your uh, very quick thoughts on uh, some of these, uh, not banks and uh, sort of NBFCs, but other financials, capital marketplace, especially wealth management firms, if you've initiated coverage recently in any of these, some believe it's a really, it's, it's a big, real secular story, maybe even better than AMC's since you own the customer. Your thoughts? Uh, look, Prashant, uh, unfortunately, we don't have coverage on any of the names, but I think to, 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 to echo your point, we do think the broad sort of financialization of savings is a, is a theme which is there to stay, and we all see that in terms of sort of equity, equity market flows and SIPs and all, all of that. Uh, so, so we do think, therefore, as a structural play, uh, I think the, the, some of the AMCs and, and, and companies that are involved in the brokerage business uh, and are able to capture some of the flow are, 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 are great businesses to be in. There, there seems to be kind of secular tailwinds behind this. Uh, um, so we, we do like them in general as a, as a, as a cohort in addition to being uh, liking the, the, some of the pockets of the financials uh, within, within, our, within our sort of portfolio allocations. Uh, by the way, uh, apart from, I mean, the market, of course, is flat, but the mid-cap index is doing very well right now. So almost half a percent gains is what you're seeing on the mid-cap index. And s many individual stocks are in focus. Uh, Sunil, before we let you go, for anyone who's perhaps missed out on your view on the cement sector, since it is the flavor of the moment right now, after that big deal that came through, Ultratech acquiring 23% stake in India Cements, just finally, if you want to end with, you know, your view on how the cement sector could shape up. I understand that you, you know, you, you're relatively looking at things like building materials, etc. But do you see a structural upcycle in the cement sector play out now that demand has improved across sectors like infrastructure, real estate, the government spending has gone up. And now we have large players that are, you know, adding on huge capacities. So are we looking at a structural upcycle here? Yeah, undoubtedly. I mean, that, that remains our uh, view, Sonia. I mean, we, we like cement at the uh, over medium term. We do think it sort of plays, as you mentioned, it plays into sort of multiple themes. There is the real estate recovery cycle, which all, all of us know. There is a focus on infrastructure. So cement continues to be one of the one of the sectors we like from a medium term perspective. Uh, but I was mentioning that at, at the current juncture, we're kind of much more selective there. And we are we are more we, we like the larger players more than the than the smaller player players uh, uh, it is our core view but if, if someone is taking a more medium term view on the sector we absolutely think that it's a it's a structure of play oh. uh, just, all right uh, got it got it uh, sunil appreciate your time here on cnbc tv 18 and thank you for commenting on the big breaking news of the day which is ultratech cement going and eyeing uh, you know going and buying 23 percent stake in india cements big move in the cement sector but a